Sorting. Oh, and now we hear the word sorting. Yeah. Here, I, again, this is a topic that uh, if you're a computer science student, you have studied extensively in your courses there. So uh, consider this treatment to be uh, supplementary. It's not, I'm not trying to outdo them. But the, the classic idea of sorting is that you have an unknown linear order on objects. I might as well make my objects the integers 1 to n. In practical applications, the objects are much more complicated. They might be elements in a database, uh, structures inside a computer language, or whatever. But, but from a mathematical standpoint, an unknown linear order on the uh, first n positive integers works just fine. So our goal is to discover this unknown linear order by asking questions that only involve a comparison. So I'm illustrating this with this linear order 25314. And again, I write that in a permutation form. So I mean 2 is less than 5 is less than 3 is less than 1 is less than 4. Now, the adversary holds that linear order in secret. And you are trying to determine that, like playing a game of 20 questions. So you ask a question, is 2 less than 1 in your linear order? And back comes an honest answer, which is always either yes or no. So if the answer is yes, then all you know about your linear extension is that the element 2 is under the element 1. That's it. You don't know anything about the others. Okay, but now you ask another question. Is 4 less than 3 in the linear order? Back comes the answer, no. So you know that it's not the case that 4 is less than 3. You know that the answer is 3 is less than 4. So now you have two pieces of information about your unknown linear order. And now I'm, I'm asking these other questions. Look at that list and convince yourself that if you know the answers to all those questions, that you know the linear order L. It's not obvious. You, even for five objects, you, you have to look at that list just for a little bit and convince yourself that that's enough. So do that. Just look at that linear order and convince yourself that if you know the answers, and, and I've done them correctly, that that linear order, 2, 5, 3, 1, 4, is the only linear order it could be. OK, I'm going to trust that you've completed that. Here is the famous University of Georgia sorting algorithm. This is what they do on the backs of their diplomas. Given a set of n integers and an unknown linear order, the UGA grad is incredibly systematic. They simply do a, a loop with a 4i equals 1 to n minus 1 for j equals i plus 1 to n. And they ask, is i less than j in L? They ask all the questions. Having asked all the questions, they get all that information, and then they can easily assemble the answer. So the running time is n choose 2, because they ask all the questions. And they're real clever, because they say, how can I go wrong if I ask all the questions? And you just have to shake your head and say, you got me there. Collect your paycheck on the, your last paycheck on the way out the door. <sighs> Lower bounds on sorting. In any case, in the worst case, 
a sorting algorithm must ask at least the logarithm base 2 of n factorial questions. You can't sort any faster than this. And here's the explanation. Imagine that I am clairvoyant. And I know in advance what questions you're going to ask. So I don't really make up the linear order in advance. I make it up on the fly. And every time you ask a question, I give you the worst possible answer. Now, what do I mean by that? Here are all n factorial linear orders on 1 to n. That's the whole set. There's n factorial permutations. Lecture 1. You ask a question, is i less than j, is 2 less than 17 in the unknown linear order? My first answer, by the way, is a freebie. I, it doesn't matter which way I answer it, because half will have 2 less than 17, and half will have 17 less than 2. So I'll flip a coin, or I'll always just say yes to your first question. So now, the size of the possible answers keeps diminishing as you hone in on the correct answer. But at any given time, I've got a set of answers that remain. And you ask a question, is A less than B in what's left? And there's some with A less than B, and there's some with A bigger than B. I want to keep the size of the answers large, and I give you the answer which maximizes it. Well, it keeps it at least half as big. And if I'm lucky or very clever and outguess you, then I can always make sure that the size of the possible answers is cut down by no more than a factor of two with each question you ask. And so that says if you ask two, if you ask t questions, then two to the t has to be at least n factorial. And taking logarithms, that says t has to be at least the base two logarithm of n factorial. All right, what is the base two logarithm? Well, we need uh, a famous formula. It's called a Stirling approximation. You can look this up on Wikipedia. You can find it in any advanced calculus book. Probably you didn't do it in freshman or sophomore calculus at Tech. But those of you who went all the way through the third semester probably have seen this. And those of you who are in advanced computer science courses have, have seen this. But I'll bet you they didn't prove it. They just referenced it. So I, I'm doing essentially the same here. Uh, Stirling's approximation for n factorial is that the limit as n goes to infinity of the expression n factorial over square root 2 pi n, n over e to the n, and that e is, is the e in calculus, that goes to 1. By the way, Stirling's approximation actually has error terms in it, and you can, again, look it up on Wikipedia and you'll you'll find proofs of it. The proofs of the formula are about that long. And you can find the error terms in it. But almost always in, in a course like this, we only need the, the first error term. The, 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 the multiplicative ratio is enough. All right, but now once you have Stirling's uh, uh, formula, take logarithm, take, you know, put the n factorial is, is asymptotic to that square root 2 pi n, n over e to the n. Now take logarithms. And so the base 2 logarithm of n factorial is like n times the base 2 logarithm of, of n. And so there is no sorting algorithm that will have a running time any faster than order of n log n. And so in the literature, any algorithm, any sorting algorithm whose running time is O of n log n is, is said to be uh, optimal. You can quibble about the, uh, the O notation because there are some where the O is, has got a constant in it which is pretty big. Uh, so purists will squabble quite a bit about 
what's a really, really good sorting algorithm. But here's a list of some. I, I just did a Wikipedia search myself and merge sort, heap sort, intro sort, tim sort, cube sort, and block sort. I don't even have any idea what tim sort is, and I don't know what intro sort is. And I don't know why tim sort, cube sort, and block sort have caps and the others don't. Uh, I, that's computer science, uh, I guess. <laughs> 